I will try to present you uh, some uh, aspect of uh, archaeotanatology. It's uh, a sort of uh, science uh, which is de developed uh, <laughs> uh, in France. And uh, after, uh, I, pre I will present you some uh, application on the site of uh, athletes. So, uh, first in France, uh, the funerary archaeology for uh, Middle Ages, it was uh, uh, sarcophagus and and some uh, funerary object and sometimes bones but there is uh, always a, a distinction with the analysis of the graves and of the bones from the graves uh, during the uh, before the 20th century uh, a lot of uh, discovery uh, uh, was uh, uh, were uh, found but uh, the antiquaries and the historians um, analyzed uh, only the object from the graves. And uh, uh, until the 70s, the research um, are focused on ethnic and religious identities. So the archaeologists didn't work on the organization of the cemetery and the links between the biological data and the typology of graves. Uh, the, the research on early medieval uh, cemeteries uh, were easy because uh, uh, the archaeologists found uh, a lot of objects, but for the other period it was a little bit uh, difficult because uh, often the cemeteries was uh, uh, used uh, during uh, several uh, centuries uh, and a lot of uh, skeletons uh, uh, were uh, destroyed and, uh, uh, and there, there was uh, no archaeological materials uh, like uh, ceramics and it will be uh, homogeneous practice and the archaeologist uh, uh, said it, uh, it, it is too difficult to study the funeral practice. And uh, after, with the development of the medieval archaeology during the 70s, there was a, a lot of excavation uh, of churches and of cemeteries. And in parallel, there was a, a study of uh, the dead during the mid Middle Ages from Ariès, Le Goff. And in parallel, we have the, uh, the historical anthropology and a development of the medieval archaeology. So uh, during the 80s and the 90s there was a different project. Uh, we, uh, the, the project combined the archives and the churches excavation and the uh, cemetery excavation. But often the biological data uh, were not used. Often the biological anthropologist stayed uh, in uh, his labs and he uh, didn't participate to the excavation. What is important, it was uh, uh, the, uh, the morphology of the skulls and not the position of the bones in the grave. So uh, it was uh, uh, during the, uh, until the 70s, there was a a distinction between the funerary archaeologist and the biologic anthropologist. Uh, but changes came from the prehistorian. There was a, a lot of excavation uh, from, uh, for example, André Louragourant. Uh, he used uh, very pre precise record of bones and uh, he uh, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, prehistorian uh, pre uh, show that it was important that a biological anthropologist uh, was uh, in the ground, uh, in, uh, on the field during the excavation to uh, draw very, uh, 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 to draw the skeleton and to analyze the position of the bones in the grave. And Henri Dudet uh, was, uh, uh, he is a uh, uh, senior researcher, he uh, created uh, a methodology called archaeotanatology and it's uh, an analysis of the position of the bones in the grave to understand 
the funerary funer funer practice. For example, he used this type of method uh, on the skeleton of Kebara. And uh, for another example, my colleagues, uh, Fanny Bocantin, uh, who excavated uh, a Natufan site uh, at uh, Malaha, used this type uh, of method in Israel. So uh, there was a big, important conference for the funerary uh, practice in France. Uh, it is the first book. The, the conference was in uh, uh, 1982. And, uh, and Henri Dudé uh, published uh, his book, his lecture, uh, in uh, two, uh, uh, ten years ago. So there was a step by step a use of this type of methods. But what is this type of methods? First, what is important? It's the funeral practice uh, are for the dead. And sometimes, uh, Henri Dudé said, it's not uh, a skeleton uh, put close to a ceramics, it's a uh, good uh, put close to the body. So what is important, it's uh, to know, it's uh, to realize that it's not a skeleton uh, which we buried in the grave, it's a body. So the, the bones moved uh, after the, uh, the, the burial with the collapse of the sediments and the, the decay of the, of, the, of, the, of the body. And in, this, in, the, in parallel, there was a, an archaeology, a development of the archaeology of the rituals with, for example, uh, John Shade. So what is important is to have new evidence of micro-action, so how the body was uh, buried and who, uh, where was the artifacts in the grave. And with the development of the rescue archaeology and after with the preventive archaeology in French now, we have a lot of new data to understand the, fu the medieval funerary practice. For example, this is a, a sarcophagus. It's uh, easy to understand the position, but sometimes it's more complex and sometimes it's uh, really complex. So if you don't know the shape of the bones and uh, where, uh, where it, uh, uh, and if you uh, didn't uh, record precisely the artifacts in the grave, it's not possible to uh, understand what's, uh, what's happened in the grave. So it's important to have a precise record uh, during uh, recording during the excavation. So the people who excavated the grave in France have a good knowledge of the osteology. It's, it's very important because when they excavate a grave, they didn't move uh, the bones. So they know, ah, this is the, the, the bones of the legs and I know that there is, uh, the, these bones uh, uh, as um, this shape, so I can uh, follow very uh, precisely the shape and the, the position uh, of the bones. And for example, it's important to dig the grave by level, like this, for example. Okay. So, what, what is archaeotanatology? It's the archaeology of death. But what is important is to understand how the dead was buried in the pit. For example, we can do the difference be between a primary deposit and a secondary deposit. A primary deposit is buried a body, but if it's a secondary uh, deposit, they buried bones. So with this type of uh, good uh, analysis, we can uh, we can do the difference between the different types of uh, deposits. For example, it's a, a pit with two skulls and uh, liquid bones. Another important uh, fact, the, dif the difference between the uh, chronology of the deposit in the grave for the deposit where we found uh, several bodies. The left <laughs> picture, it's uh, the they buried several bodies in the, in the same time, and in the other uh, picture, they buried uh, 
the two uh, skeletons not in the same time. So it's very important to, to, to do this difference to understand the funeral practice. Another thing is to know if they put directly sediments on the body after the end of the burials or they closed the pit with, for example, a wood cover. For example, uh, the left picture is uh, uh, an infilled space and the other it's uh, an empty space. So some bones uh, close to the legs moved after uh, the, the decay of the of the body, so there was an empty space around the body. But we can't, uh, we can't find more information, information data from the burial. For example, this grave was closed by a wood cover, but before they put directly the body on uh, uh, in the in the pit. Here it's different. We have some. Uh, uh, change in the position of the bones and we can we can give evidence of some uh, movement and it was a wood trunk coffin so if you if you don't use the archaeotanatology you cannot uh, differ differentiate these two types of graves for example here in the left picture they put the body first on a wood floor and after, uh, or maybe a beer. And here we have a lot of change in the position of the of the bones. And they, there was too a wood floor under the body. So it's not the same practice. Another example: several people, several skeletons in the same grave. For example, here they put first, they buried first a body and after they put another, they buried another. Here it's more complex. First, they buried the first, uh, the first uh, individual. After they reopened the grave, they pushed a part of the skeleton uh, close to the uh, side of the, of, the, of the wall of the sarcophagus and they buried a new one. And here it's another action, micro action. It's the buried uh, first a body. After they reopened the grave, they empty a part of the skeletons. They buried a new one. And after they, they deposit the, other, the, the bones in secondary position on the body. So medieval grave could be complex. <laughs> For example, a vault around 100 uh, individuals. Uh, I excavated uh, maybe 12 years ago. And for example, we we know that some skull were pushed in the corner of the vault. So it was uh, this kind of funeral practice that we can uh, present, rebuild with the type of analysis. Another thing, what is important uh, in the French uh, funerary archaeology, is the use of the biological data. Uh, first, the biological anthropologist used the data to, to do a sort of paleodemography, to know uh, how was the population during the Middle Ages. But it's, I'm sorry, but it's impossible because there is a, too much factor. We have, uh, for example, an osteological collection, but we can't uh, find the living population because th there is two factors. But what is important when we use biological data, it's use the biological data to understand the organization of the cemetery, where, where, uh, the, where the babies were buried where the, the female and male uh, individuals were uh, buried in the cemetery. That's what uh, we use uh, biological data to understand the type of uh, uh, funerary practice. So uh, we use this type of analysis for the Atli cemetery. This is uh, the cemetery of Atli at uh, the end of the excavation by Jones. 
So it's a very, very important cemetery, good preserved, and we tried to uh, do a survey of the cemetery in uh, 2014, and we, we saw on the surface uh, a lot of difference in the surface makers. But when we excavate, we could uh, have a good, uh, a good data about the position of the body in the grave. For example, a lot, uh, the majority of the body were on the back, with the head in the direction of, uh, of the castle or of the town. But we could have other data about the funerary data uh, of the funerary practice in athlete. For example, some people know this uh, slab stones. Uh, now it's uh, in the Rockefeller uh, the Museum in Jerusalem. We found the grave of this uh, uh, of, uh, of this uh, slab stone, and we excavate, and we can uh, uh, imagine the shape of the pit uh, during the funeral. I will present you a sort of a section of the grave. So the pit was uh, uh, th there were lateral steps around the pit. Okay. They buried the body directly in the pit. After they cover the pit with a, a wood cover, because we uh, we find some uh, evidence for an empty space around the body. After they put some stones to block the wood cover, and after they refill the grave with sand and ceramics and bones in secondary position. And at the end, they built a surface maker on the top of the grave. So it was not only a skeleton on a pit. There is several micro action to understand uh, what was the funerals uh, during the, 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 the burials. We found one wood coffin. We found the nails. Okay, and we can uh, we can delimit the delimit delimit uh, the, the grave, but we found two babies in the same hood coffin. We analyzed we uh, we analyzed the, all the bones in secondary position. So when they uh, we found several bones. Often the big bones are uh, were on the top of uh, of the wood cover, for example, like this. Okay, or like this. So they put directly the large bones on the wood cover, or for example, around the uh, the coffin. We found other artifacts. We find some shards of ceramics. You, uh, we know that from the Jones excavation, he found some ceramics uh, very close to the bodies, to the skeletons. So it could be important to uh, understand uh, what was uh, this type of practice. But uh, you see it here. But we found a lot of shards in the pit of the of the of the burials. But sometimes we find interesting uh, uh, ceramics for example you see a ball from cyprus here in the in the in the grave but it's important to see the ball was not directly put on the skeleton see there is a, a layer of sediment between the bones and the ceramics and we found two uh, here is the position uh, almost and we found uh, we found animals bones so maybe the animal's bones was were first in the ball, and when the ball collapsed in the grave, the bones fell down in the grave. So it could be something like that: a wood cover with a ceramics on on the, on the cover. So 
when the hood cover collapsed, it fell down. We found other artifacts. For example, this is a iron piece, very close to the legs of the body. So we, with a, a precise excavation, we know the exact position of this piece of iron. It's very interesting because uh, it's, the shape is a little bit different, but uh, in France we have uh, this type of uh, things. Could be the done part of a pilgrim staff. So it's not the same type in France, but with the position of, the, of this piece, of this uh, artifacts in the grave, we can uh, propose the, a body uh, with, uh, with a pilgrim staff in the, in the grave. Another thing, uh, this is a, a grave of a, a, sh a child. We found something very uh, nice, a cross in a mother of peel and a bead. But we know exactly the position of these two artifacts. It was between the humerus and the chest. So these two pieces could be worn uh, by, uh, on a cloth or like a necklace uh, uh, by, by the, this uh, children, <coughs> by this shield. And this grave destroyed another grave under. It was a grave of an adult. I, I show you this picture. There is something special on this picture. <laughs> I, I, I help you like this. We found several buttons, in, maybe in copper, but we, we didn't remove the buttons. So we can find the exact position of the buttons on the form arm. So it could be buttons uh, on a clothes. So it's, it's very interesting. So you, you see, we studied bones, position of bones, or, but also the artifacts, the other artifacts. So we have to combi combine all the position of the materials and analyze all the position of the materials in the grave to do uh, to, to find new information, new data on the funerals. Uh, in the cemetery, there is a, a diversity uh, in the density of the grave. For example, here there is an important density of the grave, and here it's a little bit different. But we, uh, the the larger grave are in this part of the cemetery. So uh, we excavated two areas in these two uh, parts of the cemetery. Okay, we, we do uh, a lot of uh, analysis, but the area in the north of the cemetery, uh, we found a majority of male skeleton. We study the bones in secondary position and in primary uh, position. So it was important to use and to analyze the bones in, uh, from the in, po in primary position and uh, in the filling of the grave. We found children's graves, so some uh, often it's young children, and, and also uh, children uh, bones in secondary position. So we can say the majority of male uh, adults in this uh, part of the cemetery and young children. And we found also, okay, in orange it's uh, male adults and yellow it's uh, only female grade. And what is interesting, so f we excavate very precisely the, the female grave and we found uh, a baby. And we can say, uh, we can say she, she was pregnant. So, ma uh, so maybe she was buried in this part of the cemetery, not uh, because she was uh, a female, but maybe because she was, she was pregnant. And we excavate, and uh, we, we excavate uh, last week the, another part of the cemetery. And here, the selection, the biological selection is totally different. There they were adults, female adults, male adults, and children 
of different type of edges. So the selection in the cemetery and the organization in the cemetery is different. And I will show this picture. You, could, you can see the density of the bones. A first burial was, uh, a first body was, uh, was buried here after another grave destroyed the first and after another and at, at the end they buried the bones in secondary position in the grave. So with an uh, archaeotechnological analysis we can uh, present this type of uh, reconstruction of the organization of the cemetery. So it could be it, it is impossible to understand what he, uh, what he happened in the cemetery without the type of methods. So it was uh, the end of my presentation. And uh, bef uh, uh, before to conclude, uh, I want to, to uh, acknowledge, acknowledge a lot of people, the Centre Français, Centre Israeli, um, the IIA, the Ministry of Foreign Office, the uh, of Carmel Foreign Council, my lab, the CNRS, my institute in Rab, and the University of Bordeaux. This is a project, but uh, it's a uh, it's very important project, and it was so uh, a good meeting. We 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 found. Uh, a lot, uh, lot of colleagues and friends, and uh, we uh, we hope that we can begin to uh, continue to to uh, study this site in connection with the uh, Vardit, uh, and we I hope that we 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 will uh, combine our results to understand the, the surroundings of the castle, and uh, and to compare the organization of the cemetery and maybe the link between the cemetery and the castle. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you.